Dasiva Purana. Published by Motilal Banasi. This publishes PVT Limited, Delhi 2002. The Glory of Siva Purana. Part 1 Greatness of Siva Purana. Siva Purana Mahatmyam. Chapter 4 Kankula's Salvation. The Brahmin said. 1 to 2. O Brahmin lady, fortunately you have realized, at the proper time on hearing the story of Siva Purana, that is conducive to non attachment. Do not be afraid. Seek refuge in Siva. All sins perish instantaneously by Siva's grace. 3. I shall explain to you that great object attached to the glorification of Siva, whereby your course hereafter will be pleasant always. 4. It is by listening to the excellent story, that your mind has now turned to the pure path of repentance and detachment towards worldly pleasures. 5. Repentance is the only way of acquittance for all sinners. Saintly men have extolled it as the only way of expiation for all sins. 6. Purity can be realized by repentance alone. If the sinner expiates, in the manner advised by saintly men, it removes all sins. 7. After due expiation he becomes free from fear. By repentance he attains salvation, undoubtedly. 8. The mental purity that one derives on hearing the story of Siva Purana cannot be gained by any other means. 9. As a mirror becomes free from dirt on being wiped with a cloth, so is the mind undoubtedly purified by listening to this story. 10. Accompanied by Amba, Siva stays in the minds of pure men. The sanctified soul thereupon attains the region of Siva and Amba. 11. Hence this story is the means of realizing the fourfold aim of life. It is for this that Mahadeva earnestly created this. 12. Listening to the story of Parvati's consort, Siva, brings about steady contemplation. Contemplation leads to perfect knowledge, which certainly brings in salvation. 13. A person who listens to the story in this birth, though he be unable to meditate, realizes the same in the next birth after which he reaches the goal of Siva. 14. Many repentant sinners have meditated upon Siva after hearing this story, and have achieved salvation. 15. Listening to the excellent story is the cause of beautitude for all men. Properly entertained, it dispels the ailment of worldly bondage. 16. Listening to the story of Siva, constant meditations thereon and repeated musings certainly purify the mind. 17. That, the purity of the mind, leads the meditator to a devotion of Mahesha and his two sons, Ganesha and Kartikeya. With their blessings one undoubtedly attains liberation. 18. A person devoid of that devotion, with his mind entangled in the bondage of ignorance is a brute. He can never be liberated from the worldly bondage. 19. Hence O Brahmin lady, you turn away from worldly pleasures. Listen to the sanctifying story of Siva with devotion. 20. Your mind, as you listen to the excellent story of Siva, the Supreme Soul, will become pure and thereafter you will realize liberation. 21. Liberation is assured in this very birth to a person who meditates on the lotus-like feet of Siva, with a pure mind. Truth, I am saying the truth. Sutta said. 22. After saying this, that excellent Brahmin with his mind melting with pity, ceased talking and turned his attention to the meditation on Siva with the purity of the soul. 23. The wife of Bindaga, called Kankula, when thus addressed by the Brahmin, became delighted and her eyes brimmed with tears. 24. With great delight in her heart she fell at the Brahmin's feet. Kankula, with her palms joined together said, I am blessed. 25. Afterwards she rose up with great mental agitation. With her hands joined together, her words faltering in excitement, the woman of good intellect in her detached mood said to the Brahmin, the great devotee of Siva. Kankula said. 26. O oh my lord, great Brahmin devotee of Siva, you are blessed. You are endowed with the vision of truth. You are devoted to rendering help to others. You are to be described among great saintly men. 27 to 28. O saintly one, I am about to fall into the ocean of hell. 
save me. I am now faithfully eager to listen to the Purana. On hearing its excellent story I became detached from worldly pleasures. Sutta said. 29. So saying with reverence she got the blessings of the Brahmin. Desirous of hearing the Purana she stayed there rendering service to him. 30. The intelligent Brahmin devotee narrated the Puranic story to the woman on the spot. 31. In this manner she listened to the excellent story of Siva Purana in that holy center from that excellent Brahmin. 32. On hearing that excellent story that heightened devotion, knowledge and detachment and yielded liberation, she became greatly blessed. 33. Favored by the good preceptor she quickly gained purity of mind. By the blessings of Siva she could meditate on Siva's forms and features. 34. Thus, resorting to the good preceptor, her mind was drawn towards Siva. She constantly meditated on the sentient blissful body of Siva. 35 to 36. She wore barks of trees and had her hair matted. She smeared ashes over her body, she wore garlands of Rudraksha beads, every day she took her ablutions in the sacred water. She regularly repeated Siva's names, she regulated her speech and diet, she propitiated Lord Siva in the manner advised by the preceptor. 37. O Sonaka, thus for a long time Kankula continued her meditation on Lord Siva. 38. When the stipulated period was over, Kankula in her practice of the threefold devotion cast off her body without any difficulty. 39. The divine aerial chariot, shining in brilliant colors, sent by Tripurari, Siva, himself, accompanied by his attendants arrived there quickly. 40. With her dirt and sin removed, she mounted the aerial chariot, and was immediately taken to Siva's city by the Lord's noble attendants. 41. She assumed a divine form. Her limbs were divine in their features. She assumed the form of Gauri with the crescent moon as her coronet, and divine ornaments shining brilliantly. 42. She saw the three-eyed Mahadeva the Eternal, being served devotedly by Vishnu, Brahma and other gods. 43. He had the brilliance of ten million suns, and was reverently served by Ganesha, Bhandi, Nandalsa, Virabhadresvara and others. 44. His neck had a blue hue, he had five faces, three eyes, the crescent moon as crest ornament, and his left side was a portion to Gauri who had the brilliance of lightning. 45. He was white in complexion like camphor and wore all ornaments. Besmeared with white ashes all over the body and clad in white cloth he shone brilliantly. 46. The woman Kankula became highly delighted on seeing Sankara. In her flutter of delight she bowed again and again to him. 47. She joined her palms in reverence with great pleasure, love and humility. In her great delight she shed tears of joy and had feelings of horripilation. 48. With sympathy she was allowed to approach Parvati and Sankara, who gracefully looked at her. 49. Kankula, the beloved wife of Bindaga, thus attained a divine form and was blessed with divine pleasures and made a chaperone by Parvati. 50. In that permanent abode of excellent bliss and sublime luster, she acquired a permanent residence and unobstructed pleasure. If you enjoyed this audiobook, please like and subscribe to be notified of when new audiobooks are uploaded. Thank you for listening and learning. Shanti